Waited a little bit, just we had the fire four years mm. ago and lost the last restaurant. And uh, after we built it and spent so much time and money and love and energy into this thing and building something that we thought was the end game kind of thing and this 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 uh, designed restaurant and bar that could morph as one, it one was awesome, system. Yeah. It was so sick. And then obviously having the fire and losing that in about two hours in the middle of COVID in the middle of COVID and then mm. having to readjust and move hey guys welcome to the Heart Media Podcast today we have Blaine and Chase Betoncello they are the two brothers that run Oh My Restaurant we really got into it in this episode uh, talked about everything their life they got a crazy story they started the restaurant when they were like 23 and 19 and it just recently got voted the best restaurant in Victoria. They're so passionate, they're so cool. We had so much fun talking with them. Such an easy um, conversation with the boys. They're we very could have passionate. talked to them for hours. Yeah, they're very passionate and um, the way they talk about their um, business and restaurant and food and drinks is really inspiring. Um, yeah, so we hope you enjoy it. Um, Run it the fuck up. Like, share, subscribe, all that shit. Don't say fuck. Run it up. Like, share, subscribe, all that fucking shit. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Blaine literally doesn't know where we are at any time. At any time, not yeah. the city. Yeah. Well, you just know enough like good people that yeah, usually yeah. at the right place, right? Yeah, we've already <laughs> ran into too many people um, yeah. since like on the way here. And <laughs> yeah, so we were people... trying really hard not because we went to Beer Mash and underneath is a friend of ours yeah. as above board and ran we'd... into him immediately. We're and... like, we're running late, mate. We need to go. Like, yeah, they straight away. No, no, that's how it gets. Yeah, so, but that's great. We know so many people in this area. Well, it's because you're obviously nice guys, right? I mean, I <laughs> wouldn't want to keep on chatting with you if you were. <laughs> well, even just like walking through the streets and I was like, people were looking at me and like smiling, looking at me and I'm like, I know you came to the restaurant the other week. Like just <laughs> random people it's walking past me in the street. Do, I'm like, oh, yeah. fuck, this is weird. It's weird how many people come to the restaurant. <laughs> yeah, I mean, but like it's weird when you're when out you at see dinner. them and stuff or whatever. Yeah. And you know, like especially the hospitality places, we do get a lot of hospitality venues yeah. in. That's one of the things we get specifically yeah. a lot of. Yeah. Is so that. people from I can just start recording. Come, yeah, come to us. We a are lot. recording. Oh, we're yeah. recording. Oh, yeah. yeah, cool. Oh, cool. We were on. Don't say anything incriminating. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I can, but we can just cut it out. Of so. um, but, welcome, uh, no, boys. It's, it's, yeah, thank, thank you for having us. Thanks for having yeah. us. Yeah, we're so pumped. This has been like a big deal for us. <laughs> right? I love we, actually, yeah. we actually <laughs> scheduled you guys in later to record. We were like, oh, we better like make it all right for the Oh My Boys. We <laughs> 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 already had a couple today. Though. Guiltily, yeah, pardon? We already had some today. No, no. no it, we've done four. We do one, we've been doing one a week for the past four weeks. It's the yeah. fourth week of us doing it now, yeah. I'll all say it a lot of times. We're just two idiots that manage to run a nice restaurant. So. That's how we feel about our <laughs> own business. <Us>. <laughs> <laughs> Every day I'm like, okay, so like we're paying these people. We've got these clients and we also like get to now connect with like cool people like you guys but to us it just feels like we're just doing it out of his house in black rock like four years <laughs> yeah. ago it feels, it feels exactly the same yeah yeah big you both started syndrome. really early tell us a little bit about it yeah, yeah we, it all let's go yeah i was so yeah we started back in 2013 i was i was 19 and he was 23 11 years ago it's <laughs> crazy years ago. it's crazy so yeah it started as just like a little kind of i don't like not the word bistro but it was just like a an a slightly more upmarket little restaurant we only seated like 25 people we had an a la carte and a tasting menu and it was like the first time in the area where there was a, ta a an option for a tasting menu and people were like we don't have to choose like, like fuck, yeah we'll just, <laughs> yeah, we'll just give you stuff and, and we'll that's the same yeah. <laughs> and it was, and there was like, no trust yet yeah, and, and trust these me. people were like oh fuck this we're not going to that joint like yeah. 90 dollars for a tasting menu you gotta Jeez. be kidding Damn. um and yeah then it just it's just slowly escalated as we've gotten probably more mature but also we've gotten more confident in what we do yeah because like we had to stick to our guns though we, yeah, we totally, did do yeah. a fair bit of a cull of like a filtering process of people as well and asking people to step out of their comfort zone a lot to and once they did and they had a good experience they were then on board with what we're doing but we had to go through a filtering process of getting people to come in be disappointed by whatever for whatever reason <laughs> like that we don't do enough meat or we don't have a palmer so random, on the menu yeah. or whatever it was yeah and then they don't come <laughs> back and we just always looked at it like well good 
go tell your friends never to come back yeah, yeah. because we don't want you or your friends here because <laughs> yeah. none of you are like what we want yeah. and what we're trying to do. Mm. So you go through that process and it, yeah, eventually. I mean, yeah. yeah, the idea of opening a restaurant in a suburb is already like a risk, you know, mm. you're like 45, 50 minutes away. Yeah. Um, add like the fine dining bit to it becomes... We, we grew up out there, like we've, we've always been from Beaconsfield and Berwick and surrounding areas and like the main thing when we opened was like we would go to town and out this way to go for nice dinners and, and things like that and it would be, it's a big trek to do it but we were like, there's people out, there's so many people out here who want something like this, something that's different, something that's, in our area there was two restaurants Special that, occasions were, that were like busy all the time, it was Shanika's which is still our favorite restaurant and mm. it's been going for like 30 years and it's just shout out we love we've just been going there since we were kids but every night of the week it's hundreds of people in this dining room it's amazing and then there was Giorgio's yeah and there were the two Italian restaurants so they're really busy we are now in the Giorgio's building um we, we moved in there four years ago but um, when we started and thinking about this restaurant, we were like, well, there's people out here who want the special occasion and they want something different and we want it to only be a five minute Uber ride, you know, like it yeah. doesn't have to be this enormous thing. It can be something around the corner. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, yeah. So your mentality is more like you're looking for, to bring people from your area to your restaurant rather than attract people from the city to the restaurant yeah, because totally. you're looking for people like-minded to yourselves. You're from that area and yeah. those, that's the kind and of... And that, first and foremost, that, yeah. was the, that was where we went with it. Yeah, we were just trying to give everyone in our area... We didn't even think about the city, to be honest, or anything out, or out of... International? Like no, nothing. or international or national at that stage, nothing like that. It was just that we knew we could do a really nice job for... for we, we really just wanted to show showcase ourselves on and have no restrictions and be free to do that and one of those things was a fine dining experience that we love and we thought that the area needed it yeah and um before they thought it they and then eventually like it, it all gelled together and now we live off regular guests of local guests who have been dining customers. with us for 11 years uh, yeah. how did you guys fell into hospitality and like chef and like sommelier how did it all happen like uh, well, oh. yeah, you got. Yeah, this one. I got this yeah. one. This is sort this of. Be good. It started with like. <laughs> no, well, it's like my Strap bro- in, guys. Well, no, no, because it's, it's literally just the. It's so funny because it was my older brother is also a chef. Yep. And he was working in a restaurant. I needed to get a job as a dishy. Went and got a job as a dishy, um, and then that was it. Like they did pizzas there, and they they did really good food, but I just actually walked in and, and really enjoyed doing the dishes and the, the tempo of it and the speed of it. And then eventually they offered me an apprenticeship like like after a few months and I just took it. And how old were you? I was 15 and a half, nearly 16, okay. 16 years old. Yeah. Great. Nice. Did you finish high school? You just went straight into the apprenticeship? Uh, straight into the apprenticeship. Nice. Yeah, nice. so left at the end of year, like nine, start of year 10 yeah. sort of thing. So you've gone into fine dining. It's a pretty niche and, you know, you've obviously honed your skills. Your dishes are beautiful. Where did, was that a fine dining restaurant that you worked nah, at originally? No. no, we never worked it. So this is the unique thing about Chase and I. We never worked any fine dining restaurants. So none of our training comes from there either. And you started really early. Like, yeah. how did you figure it out? Like, just mm. fucked up a lot. <laughs> no joke. Yeah. It was yeah. it's literally... And we fucked up, but we also don't have anyone above us sort of putting pressure on us to do things in a certain way. We can make it our own. And uh, like our systems, the way we run and operate is completely unique to what we... To, to us it's not like a carbon copy of another restaurant systems or anything like we get new staff come in front of house and it's upside down back to front and they're like how the fuck do you organize this and i'm like Gee. well because we, we made yeah. it yeah, yeah we made it unique to us and all of our training comes from and what everything we do is just from learning as we go but also obviously a lot of reading and a lot of um research when it comes to the food side of things like a lot of a lot of years of but then also having the ability to go in and do whatever I wanted all the time and try everything from a food perspective. This is yeah. and the same with him for wine and everything else he does. We just had no, because we own the restaurant, we don't have any investors or anything like that. We just literally can do whatever we want. And we took lots of risks in doing it every week, just trialing new things. And a lot of the time, maybe it didn't work or for us, it didn't work. People still enjoyed it, but it didn't work. But you just adapt on those ideas. Yeah. And if you keep doing that continuously, continuously, continuously for like five years straight, 
you all of a sudden get really good at it. Yeah. Mm. And then, so we haven't stopped at all. So it's been 11 yeah. years of consistent, over 100 hour weeks of work, of consistent pressure and work. And we've honed ourselves into being like good at what we do mm. in that and, regard, and rather than being... Two points yeah. on that as well. One is the investment thing. There's no, we don't have everything at our fingertips to go and do mm. whatever we want and buy all the things we need or want, for example. So we really have to make do with every, everything has to be thought about, everything has to be calculated, even though there is a lot of chaos and sporadic <laughs> about what we do, but like every little purchase has to be really smart, like we can't just go and waste money. And the other thing is probably the fact that me and him work really well with each other as well, and there's like a massive amount of respect front of house and kitchen, and that's such a, it's a blanket statement, but it is such a rarity in, in hospitality where there's a lot of chef-owned um, and operated restaurants and there's a lot of front of house-owned and operated restaurants. Sometimes you can walk into those places and you can tell who it's owned by. Is Which it owned side? by a front of house yeah. or is it owned by a kitchen? And it's like, it's not a negative thing, but you see like, okay, well, why is the dining room set up like this? Food's amazing and you know, all this, but the, there's so many gaps in the dining room. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And then there's there's that. You see it the other you way. See around. the other way around. You're like, geez, the dining room is fucking immaculate. This is so good how it's set up, but the food's missing. Where me and him are next to each other every day, and we we enjoy it. We got a lot of respect with each other, but we also like we both play off each other really, really well. We've both got strengths and weaknesses, and we can both fill fill those spots. And the really service well. is blended as one. Yeah. So that's the biggest thing that's unique about us as well. Our service is blended as, as a whole group of people With serving together. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, you'll get a lot of chefs dropping and explaining yeah. as well as front of house, but each of us playing off each other nicely so that we all understand the job mm. R rather than it being trained separately that you do this and you do that. We all do it as a group. There's no divide. But obviously. That, there's yeah. no divide that makes yeah. us go, we're front of house, we're not going to go near you. And your back of house, we're not going to go near yeah. you. That's just not how it works. And you so. obviously pass that to your team, mm. like that family brotherhood. Mm. And the team, the team are awesome yeah. as well. And and we're in there every service with them. We don't miss services unless there's something like drastic. We've probably or, only missed like three each over the last 11 years, maybe, yeah. for like weddings Crazy. or whatever. Wow. Yeah, well, Other than if that, you want to go on a holiday, we close no, no, the we, restaurant we, if we need we, to. We close the restaurant every year for three weeks to give everyone their like yearly holidays and stuff. But we'll never go on a holiday, Chase and I, without... Yeah, yeah that's... We, we always we work every team. service, yeah. 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 So, that's beautiful. Sorry, I yeah. just want to, like... It's how stubborn. did Chase <laughs> fell into it? I know how, Yeah. Yeah, so how well, did Chase I, get into it? I, uh, I'm the youngest of four boys. And uh, well, actually, all three of the older brothers all worked in, in restaurants. So, uh, Tice was a chef. Is a chef, sorry. Um, Clay was a front of house manager, ran a restaurant. He was, he was young and it was a, and, but he was a, a weapon. He was so good, mm. good, wasn't he? He could work a so room good. of 200 like that without even thinking. And then obviously Blaine in the kitchen as well. So I just sort of worked in, uh, worked in the kitchens with them and um, I loved working in the kitchen. Um, in hindsight, I probably should have done an apprenticeship, but that's all right. That's <laughs> is what it is. I did it seems hours. like it's worked out. I did yeah. enough yeah. hours in the kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> tell, tell them about how we how it all started with the wine. It, like we when we opened the restaurant. Oh, then, yeah. Then when the restaurant came around, it was kind of like okay, I'll do front of house. New fucking nothing about wine still feel like i don't know much but naturally but gifted at talking to people though. i can talk the leg off, I can talk the leg off a chair <laughs> you need and to do. i can bullshit my way through any situation <laughs> and it, that's Seriously. literally how it started that's it was so just good. like okay um fuck yeah i know what's going on in the kitchen i've got that down pat so now i've just got to work out how to get plates to these people make sure they're all having a good time and and that's it and then the sort of wine stuff happened as gradually with that it started with beer i i remember drinking different beers and going well that's that's different to that that's really cool and then the wine thing started um we needed a matching we started yeah. people started asking us for matching on we would only sell at one point there we would only sell maybe what was it like um you know 10 or so yeah, tasting up, menus yeah. a week and of those 10 sometimes people would ask us for matching yeah and, and we we're like, like oh we don't know and now one of our chefs that, <laughs> one of our chefs beautiful beautiful man nico may you rest in peace yeah was, uh, yeah he was really cluey with these things and he'd go okay Chaga, this is what we're going to do and we'd write out a couple of wines that would go with things and i was like pouring them and basically just i realized that it was a subject that i remembered and i got really interested by the geography of it and the people behind it and 
and it gets you drunk. And I was like, this is really cool. But it was, was just basically... Like, got everything in one. <laughs> yeah. no, it gets cool. you fucked up. That's yeah. like, <laughs> the, that's like <laughs> the dream yeah. job. And I, but it was the subject where I was like, I could taste 50 wines and I would remember everything about them. And I'm like, I've, that, I've no subject in my life has ever allowed, like, allowed me to have that. You found um, your niche. Yeah, you found yeah. his niche. Yeah. Just, and it's it just like fell into that's my lap, beautiful. basically. Crazy and thing. Then yeah. I met a guy, um, Jeffrey Lindsay, uh, who I'm still close with. And he had a wine school um, at... Uh, TAFE um, that doesn't exist anymore unfortunately and um, yeah I started doing that on Mondays I was still on red pea plates and <laughs> so I was like we taste 60 wines <laughs> yeah. yeah I would taste like 60 <laughs> wines spit 70 wines spit everything out and I'd drive home like please don't go through a booze bus uh, please don't go through a booze bus but it was like yeah that was just blew my mind in, yeah. in, into terms of wine and now seems it's like there's uh, something in the water yeah. down at the Bird and Chandler yeah. household yeah. Right? Yeah. but a random naturally gifted chef <laughs> naturally gifted sommelier all came just together that. Yeah, we, yeah, and like I said, we had no restrictions. He was allowed, like in his world, he was just like, all right, well, we're going to start up in the wine program. We're going to start doing these things. And then when the vice versa with the food and we just sort of came together like that the whole time and we've been doing that ever since. Mm. We just and get we, better at what you're doing. And we I, feel like we're still getting better we're every week. Starting, like, really. that's, the, yeah. that's the scary thing. It's just like this, we were talking about on the way here, like the, this week's menu is so much elevated than last week's and last week's was mm. fucking good yeah. and then he's we're so excited about service and that on Thursday because we're like oh my god this new menu is going to be awesome yeah. and I'm <laughs> thinking crazy. and I'm thinking about yeah. the wines and what we're going to get in and what we're yeah. going to do and then it's like every single week you feel like there's no nothing's stagnant nothing's boring it's great all, staff too they're all they're really excited well. and they wear it like we do so they um they're as like as excited and passionate about the product as we are your mm. team are fantastic yeah, i exactly. never have had a restaurant experience like i did when i came to your oh, restaurant my, my wife said to say hello she had a crush on the entire table <laughs> <laughs> she <laughs> literally <laughs> she's said to me on the way here she's Good. like tell them i love them <laughs> we had so much fun with you guys uh, but the fact that like what back to what you originally said where you're blending together the two um the the service the front of the house and the back of the house it's so fantastic because I, kn I knew you guys already before I went there. Yeah. And then you brought me a dish and I'm like, this guy is the chef, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. And I was like, oh, you're the chef and then you're the chef and it's like, you got great chemistry and you're telling the guy across the table, love you, bro. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. Talking about the dish and everything and it just feels so casual, mm. but so fantastic. I think it's just like due to your team, they're so fun and like yeah. they're passionate and that's what I also wanted to say, just judging, just I love hearing you guys talk, but I just want to say like, could, I think the whole thing has been underpinned by you guys just being so passionate. I can tell that you're so, you love what you do so mm. much. It's beautiful. And I can also tell that you're both really proud of each other and love what each other oh, yeah. does oh, in yeah, the restaurant, totally, yeah. which is so beautiful. It's a beautiful and like we, like, yeah, relationship to have with your is. brother, honestly. Business partners and brothers, you, you have your arguments and shit, but ours are so... As is so dumb, like the main thing we argue about is who's better out of LeBron and Co uh, LeBron and Michael Jordan. Yeah. And it's like I'm they get LeBron and they get so bitter and the staff are like, You guys shut the fuck up. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Stop. and we're like, I don't want to talk to him. I don't want to talk to yeah, him. Yeah. Like, it's like, should this be I'm done here in this shit? And like we wouldn't talk to each other for half a service and I'm like, Blaine, I get it. It's just like we're good. Different yes. eras. Yeah, we're man. good. <laughs> <laughs> it's like you can't good. compare the two. It's no, completely yeah, different. different eras. <laughs> like, fuck. So it's like those sort of oh things. And God. it's like, especially the last few years, the pressure the pressure we've been under is in hospitality. Everyone's been under. I think ours elevated a little bit. Just we had the fire four mm. years ago and lost the last restaurant. And uh, after we built it and spent so much time and money and love and energy into this thing and building something that we thought was the end game kind of thing yeah. and this 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 uh, designed restaurant and bar that could morph as one, it one awesome, system. Yeah. It was so sick. And then obviously having the fire and losing that in about two hours. In the middle of COVID. In the middle of COVID and then mm -hmm. having to readjust and move into a new building mm -hmm. and start again and still be excited about it. Like it's been a, it's been fucking pretty. Yes, yeah, so we've had a lot difficult. of things go. <laughs> we've had a lot of ups that and downs. That must have been really stressful, that fire. Like, oh, yeah. It was worse, worse, yeah, worst couple of months. And, and the fact we got it reopened in like six weeks. Yeah, we had three um, days, like three days later, we had the keys to Giorgio. So while that place, all that's of That's where the post office thing yeah, was. Yeah, yeah, that yeah. was the post office. Yeah. And then we, we had to pay our staff. So we had to like, we we're already under the pump with, money anyway because of COVID and because of the cost of building it and all that we were already under the pump so we had like three days or we had about two weeks we had to get the place open two or three weeks 
But yeah. you were already established at that time, like kind of known. We were well, too, known, we were yeah. too hatted. Yeah. We'd, we'd like, we were on the radar. We, we were honestly talking about this on the way in, how different uh, the kind of perception is of what Oh My is these days. Mm. Like we'd go to awards nights or hospitality events and it was like, oh, hey, where are you guys from? And like, oh, from Oh My. And are like, oh, cool, cool. That's yeah, the one all the way place, down yeah. in thing. Yeah. <laughs> now it's like, hey, boys, how's the restaurant? Da, da, yeah. da. And it's like the... We're sort of, we're on the map a little bit more um, in terms of the way we, like, the, what people see. But um, we were established, but we were right on the cusp. Oh, I it was feel. still really tricky times, yeah. yeah. But then we, 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 we just got our, everyone we knew together and just built the place. What was the community it. around there? Oh, like, unbelievable. Yeah. Unreal. Unreal. You guys started a GoFundMe, right? I was reading yeah. something. Yeah. Yeah. Our, yeah. our nice. sister in law started a GoFundMe and, and uh, just went bonkers. Like, the That's community got behind us. We had people like, we had a big working bee day and like 10, 15 guests of the restaurant rocked up and yeah, were all in like, in all had gloves and stuff and were helping us clear stuff. That's so you would not get that in the city. Wow. I'm no. going to say, yeah, I sure <laughs> you would not get that thing. in Melbourne yeah. City. We yeah. had like, I, I remember one clear day, we needed to get rid of these huge fucking garden beds at, at the oh, front of the yeah. restaurant. And a mate calls me, hey mate, I've just picked up a, a crane, crane uh, truck, crane thing. truck. I'll be there in 10 minutes. And we worked for Just five hours picking people, these things yeah. up and moving them to the farm. That's and crazy. I was like, dude, can I give you anything? He's like, fuck off. Like, nah, just no, endless, 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 <laughs> endless help. Yeah. yeah. And the other crazy. one was when we when we were in COVID, what we set up was a market. And we had, you know, probably about 150 people lined up out the front of the restaurant every Sunday to just support. They just came in to just buy whatever they needed to buy to help us sell it all. That's that was all they did. Yeah. Like it was just it was, they they turned into a bit of a they liked to do it because they could get out basically. Yeah, yeah. And we did coffees in the line. Became and like, a bit of a like a community yeah. social. Yeah, yeah. At, I'd set the yeah. beer keg up and I'd I'd give out beers at nine in the morning. Called them lattes, yeah. yeah. A couple of lattes. So. Nice, nice. Um, but yeah, I want to just bring it back. You were like honestly, like the way you were talking about like being excited about like Thursday, the new menu. Like you could feel a lot of passion. And, like, just you two, I, I could really resonate with, like, you know, building this thing and figuring out all, everything along the way. Like, when we started, we had no idea <laughs> where we want to be, you know mm, what I mean? And, like, <laughs> <laughs> honestly, it's like it's like a thing when you're just building your own business. Uh, yeah. you, you kind of just have to learn everything. And, like, you know, we started as something and then... We, we figured we have to learn marketing, you know, Tyron did a marketing course. Mm. I have to learn editing, you know what I mean? And you yeah. just like build it up slowly, slowly. And yeah, we've, and like, that's the thing we've, we've had to build skills outside of, um, outside of pouring wine and, and making food. Mm. Like we're Blaine's now, like he'll be very modest about it. So I'll pump it up a bit. Um, but he's farming and everything it. as well. Oh, like yeah. that, that side, that arm of the restaurant sort of goes not unseen because you do get a really good, um, look in that when you come and dine with us but the amount of work and effort and time that he goes in with Willem and Robbie down there and, and working out this like farming and, and varieties that work for us like that's fucking huge like mm. some chefs they, they cook and they're in the kitchen and then that's kind of it he's yeah. farm four days a week and then at the restaurant every service so as when well. did you start the farm so the farms are, are quite a beautiful story really it's um it's, uh, we started 11 years ago as well, so when the restaurant opened, but we were already doing a little bit of growing and, and, and we had a few garden beds and stuff at the restaurant and, and a few at home. And a man, Robbie Minot, who doesn't get any enough credit for everything he does, but... Shout out, Robbie. Robbie, yeah. absolute legend, legend, superstar. He actually owns the farm and he's my brother's father-in-law. That's the connection. Oh, okay. Um, yeah. He met us one day. He just came into the restaurant as we were building, and he's like, "Oh, I've just recently retired, and I just want to help you guys out because I love seeing young guys have a crack." And no way. Um, I've got a lot of history in doing um, bookkeeping and accounting and all this sort of stuff, as well as a he was a police detective for twenty-five years, a very decorated one too, very an incredible man, right? And then I didn't realize he, he invited us to a, a meeting one day at the farm. And uh, to do the bookkeeping, went out there and he's growing everything. So it turns out he's permaculture, horticulture background, everything on a three acre farm. We get Robbie on the podcast. Yeah, literally. Hell. Yeah, <laughs> Robbie, incredible need, man. Need a hours, and yeah. he'd, ha he'd hate it if you heard this because like he hates being talked up and spoken about or anything. Modest bloke. Yeah, yeah. very modest. And then he was like, oh, well, 
I, why don't you just plant some stuff in out in my garden? Well, why don't we talk about that? Like you buy the seeds and I'll grow, start growing some stuff for you. And um, it started there. So he was already growing a lot of varieties that I found really interesting. And then we started up a relationship like that. So in which year was that like? Um, that was 2013. 2013, yeah. And that okay. started there, but then we were still ordering vegetables and stuff from local farmers and everything like that for probably the first two years and then doing a little bit of growing ourselves and then each year the percentage would just go up of how much we're growing. And nice. I reckon by about the third year, we were third or fourth year, we were growing everything. Yeah. And that just took a shitload of work, getting the garden beds made and getting the whole thing looking like it does now, which what is like 400. You DIY'd yeah. the whole thing. Pardon? You DIY'd the whole thing. Yeah, yeah. we built the whole, built the whole thing. thing. Yeah. Well, Robbie yeah. told us what to do and where it would look like and how it all looks. It's very aesthetically Places pleasing. Very it's nice. Farm. It's not yeah. uh, It's aesthetically pleasing. Oh, yeah. oh, mate, it's so gorgeous. It's incredible. Every, it looks every, beautiful. Yeah. Mm. We want to come and shoot you guys there or something. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's yeah. yeah. stunning. We yeah. do that quite a bit. Like, uh, we get a few people who want to come see it all the time. So, we're always open to that. Yeah. And, um, yeah, what he did there was incredible. He, he just sort of created an environment for us to 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 grow on with our business so once we started growing everything that was our that became our um uh, your thing your point of difference thing. that's what yeah. we are yeah it became yeah. who we are and, and that was that was kind mm. of our one of the big turning points was like we were doing i remember it really clearly we had this like duck and beetroot dish and like, I remember it so clearly because they were all our own beetroots and we are like, this is fucking awesome. So mm. cool. But then people would be like, that duck dish was amazing. I'm like, Blaine's like, it's about the beetroot. Fucking yeah. <laughs> It's all then, about the beetroot. Then it basically, yeah. in a couple of weeks, switched into cooking the beetroots in duck fat, doing the duck skin, <laughs> using the, the flesh somewhere else in the menu, but then having a dish that was beetroot focused. But to highlight and that's vegetables. where we're unique. Yeah, in that regard, we, we dress our... Now we try and well, there are there is still meat courses, but we and it's all there is a lot of meat courses, but our vegetables are dressed with meat rather than yeah. The other way around. How, the how other do you plan it all? Like you know, considering that having a farm, it means you know there is time limits and seasons. And oh, yeah. Do you plan in advance? Do you? How does it work? Full, like process? full year and a half, two year in advance. Two Crazy. years, literally. It's all. Wow. It's all it's being done crazy. right now. So the last four years, we've already we've had really good, consistent sort of growing and set up and how we want it to look, and and certain things that we're, we're growing a lot of because we liked it, and even to the point where we'll we'll plan out how far apart we plant things for our harvesting aspect, mm. because a lot of our time goes into just purely harvesting. Yeah. So um, with that in mind, we there's a heap of planning involved in the whole place. Yeah. Um, it's a whole so, world like farming. Yeah. And cooking is a whole other world and yeah. just like well, that's all why of I it. Gi- that's why I give him so much um, pump up because it's like he's doing both. Yeah, like, yeah it's crazy. But it's farming's been in your family for a long time, correct? Yeah. I yeah, think so I read somewhere 100, 100 years. Yeah, like yeah. That? Long yeah. time? Yeah. 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 Well, so your family are farmers? Did you guys grow up on a farm? No. So next year will be 100 years of Burton Cellos in Australia from Italy. Yeah. And um, they came over and basically settled down where we like in Berwick area yep. where we mm. are um, so that, yeah we grew up with the old man on the on uh, the family farms our nonno was a farmer uh, all his brothers cousins everyone they all yeah. were my nonno too yeah, <laughs> yeah it's just yeah, like and yeah. we grew up like this guy got carotene poisoning once because he ate so many, <laughs> so many carrots, carrots off the farm <laughs> and the top of his head went <laughs> orange, orange. Yeah. Took but, you had a, story, but yeah. your nonno had a farm here in Australia yeah yeah, yeah. 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 and then and, uh, mum's and his side, dad as well yeah yeah and then mum's side is um, some of the first orchards planted in like um in the Mornington Peninsula, yeah, yep. and we can we can date that back for a really long time. That's so. crazy. Yeah. Um, so it's in the blood. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, I would also just like to quick, uh, take a quick detour. Of this carotin story. Yeah, your head went orange. Legit. Yeah. Mum took him to spill the, the beans. Mum took, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> took him to the doctor. Literally, I ate so many fucking carrots. Top of his head went orange, and then Mum's like, "What the fuck went wrong?" <laughs> took him to the doctor, and the doctor's just like, "Have you been eating lots of carrots?" And he's like. Yeah, and he goes, just carotene point. Like, <laughs> He's a carrot. So <laughs> His dad would just like bring back bag, huge bags of um, celery and and, yeah. and and carrots and you name it. Yeah, yeah. We were lu- really lucky in that regard. We yeah. ate really good vegetables. Mediterranean we diet. Very lucky, it's yeah. Unreal. Did you guys, who was the cook, mum or dad? Or is that where you gained the appreciation for food? Or Mum was when we were younger. Yeah. And then when the parents um, split, mum owns her own business and she's a... 
she's been working her ass off fashion for, stylist yeah, yeah for yeah she's a personal stylist and uh, she's been working her ass off for years and years and years so um when that when she was busy with that um not as many not as many home cooked meals from yeah. mum dad's a dad's a wicked cook he's uh he makes staff meals for the for the team and uh, yeah. he, he's a, he's he's really really good um, he's in the restaurant yeah yeah so he yeah. helps yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah oh he just yeah he, he comes makes staff we meals swap every him. now we, yeah. he we comes swap. in for dinner yeah. and he gives a staff meal that's yeah. how it works so, yeah. he makes snitties yeah. and pasta bakes and these kinds yeah. of things Cotoletta. yeah, yeah, yeah makes Cotoletta yeah, literally and Cotoletta. Like, yeah. and man they're so smart on he'll tell you they're the best ever made because they're not and they are the best ever made I came back from Milan and I had Cotoletta over there and I was like I called dad and I was like dad you <laughs> way better <laughs> yeah. so much better and well, he almost part, cried on the he's phone he's like you know he's to the point where he goes to the butchers and they know his name and they're like well, don't worry Roy we've got him ready for you like he, mash, he makes him bash him out yeah, or prepare yeah, yeah. him for him in a certain he's way he's gone yeah. back there the next day and told him they weren't good enough <laughs> it must have been two or three days he knows the quality yeah, yeah. 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 he's so. <laughs> stubborn stubborn walks but where it comes from I don't know like it, I don't think it comes necessarily from either of them in regards to like cooking and things mm. it was just um, a work ethic thing I think. it was a work ethic thing we got yeah for sure and being able to succeed in kitchens because we can work hard was probably the biggest one. Like yeah. just being a little bit a step ahead of everyone else. Being able to we were, grind it out. Yeah, yeah. really grind yeah. out the hours, yeah. yeah. And be just, happy to do it as well. Yeah. Like like wanting to actually be there and doing it. They so. teach you to work hard. I think, yeah, I definitely come from a similar background. My parents, are ta- my family's Italian and they had they always had businesses and they actually had restaurants. Mm. And they're always, so it's just like, you just got to work hard. That's the yeah. thing. Nothing's that's what you get brought up you. learning. Yeah, nothing's yeah. going to come to you. And yeah. like, that's what you get brought up learning so yeah. i think it's just natural and it does give you that step ahead from yeah, other people yes yeah, 100 you'll be happy to just put in the hours and you'll do it and you'll be smiling the whole time and you'll be having a good time and making everybody feel comfortable and whatever yeah, else yeah. so yeah. boys um honestly like 23 19 how did that idea come to you like it's a bit scary to open a restaurant at that age Crazy. like how yeah. did it what was like that moment to like it was it was pretty much i i remember it pretty clearly it was like it was literally went overseas i think it uh, it worked from my from my perspective it worked um just a lot of work in the first sort of seven or eight years i did as an apprentice and like i got a head chef job pretty early as well and that was good for me but also kind of like i worked a lot like a lot more than i you know probably should have and then it's how it gets and how it gets and I, out, I did love it weeks and yeah. Shit, yeah and i loved it but then i got to a point where i was i, I had choices i was either going to go into the city and work at a few of the better restaurants that already sort of sussed them out and i could if i wanted to and i went instead of that i went overseas for a few months pissed everything up against the wall pissed, uh, yeah i had a ball went overseas traveled all around europe and just did that came back a and different then, person mind you actually yeah i will i will it was that, that europe trip that changed it, was, it. yeah, yeah oh, i was just he was, like he was God, pretty shy that. and stuff yeah. classic and he came back and he was a different cat like he was yeah. Yeah, very confident. After You've seen the back. world now. Yeah, because you'd never, you'd never been overseas before. No, nah, nah. does it does a lot to yeah, you for sure. Does. Yeah, and, and then how I old were you when you did that? Uh, I was twenty two when I went over there. Yeah. I turned twenty two over there. Sick. Traveling, so, traveling is honestly like it's such a great thing you should do. Yeah, like you know, every time you travel is like mm. you get you a revelation. Learn, yeah. I've 100%. just just come back from my first ever overseas trip. No Literally. way. Was that yeah. your first what? ever one? Yes, ever. Yeah. No yeah. way. Yeah. Three yeah. weeks in Italy and I've come back just like, yeah, it's fucking, it's blown my mind. No way. Right. Literally the first ever time. Yeah. <laughs> I yeah. can't believe How it. Come? How was it? Yeah, tell <laughs> yeah. us about it. Uh, well, just like we've had the restaurant for just so not long. A chance. Just haven't had an opportunity. Yeah. Like I've probably had opportunities, but I've just, every time it, something, we're just like, oh fuck, I just don't, I, I don't want to do it yet. I'm fine. Uh, but it was unreal. Yeah, it was just, um, yeah, just stuck to Italy, Rome, Venice, Milan, Cinque Terre. Um, Montepulciano, Florence, back to Rome, did things in between, ate amazing food and drank a million Italian Gatorades just to keep my <laughs> hydration levels up. And, Italian Gatorade. Uh, oh, that's so good. Just, just, yeah. I love it. Uh, and yeah, just saw a whole new world. It was just, my jaw was on the ground the whole time. So it's unbelievable. Um, yeah, yeah. It, was, it was great to see that kind of hospitality as well. We ate at a lot of different levels of restaurants. It's different. Um, and just, yeah, seeing that, that the hospitality over there was just so so different it was there was good and there was bad like there was mm-hmm. things that made me go fuck okay i can't do that but there was other things where i'm like i need to do that mm-hmm. and i need to start incorporating this into into what i do i, I would that. say your yeah. i would say your restaurant actually reminds me 
of like a classical kind of European restaurant in terms of hospitality and like mm. ease with the staff yeah. and feeling well that kind of connection that you have and yeah. like having everyone there. So yeah, yeah that's something was, you would have. It was amazing. I just find myself looking back on my phone and looking at the <laughs> photos of of everything. So can't I can't linger too long though because I'll I'll get I'll you get, get lost in it. Like, <laughs> yeah, and then I like start daydreaming. I'm like, oh, I just want to be sitting. Yeah, but it it does change you. And yeah, I think when that happened, we got back and we just oh, we got back and I was just like, I'm not. I don't want to work for anyone again. Done working for people. So fair. Um, and it was like I know I was young, but I've been in I've been having a crack at it for a long time in regards to yeah. So. I kind of had felt like I was very confident. I had a lot of ideas and I was a lot of very energized. And I just said to the boys, I was like, we need to open a bloody... Re-. It was, I don't know if it was me or it was all of us kind of mutually had a conversation about opening opening a restaurant. It was like, let's just do it so we don't have to work for anyone and just do our own food mm. and, and at, have at our time, own thing. At the time, our older brother, Tice, was, he started, opened with us as well. Yeah. And we had our stepbrother, Tyler, working in the kitchen um, he just finished his apprenticeship under yep. Blaine. So four brothers, and then another, <laughs> and then like friends were working. Like Alcon's still working with us now, um, and he he was there. And that's so good. So yeah, like it was, it was really it was like really good. yeah, it was really family sort of. Run. I got the call. I was plastering at the time. That's right. And yeah. I got a call while I was on a work site. Hey mate, we've got the keys. I'm like, fuck yeah, I that's quit. elite. Yeah, you quit. That's, that's it. it. Stop. Yeah. All in. Yeah, yeah. all in. That's, that's crazy. It was like that. We just yeah. and we we hated didn't plastering. even look back. Yeah. It was, we started building them. We had to, we had two and a half months to like rip it apart and rebuild it. Um, with no, we had only the money we had just thrown into it. Yeah. It was barely any, and we just got Made it open, work. opened the doors, and then yeah, it took a few years, like a couple of years of really hard sort of, you know, going through that motion of learning how to run a business yeah. and also, but not really getting the place on board yet, like mm. the area. And then a few things fell our way in regards to like good reviews here and there, or we started getting more rhythm and more growth at the farm and the food started to make more scent, whatever it was, we started to work out how to serve people well, I guess. Like it took yeah. time. Yeah. Did you take it seriously? Like from the oh, beginning? Super serious. Super serious. Yeah, yeah. So really, really serious <laughs> and like knew how to do it, but didn't realize just the aspects of it that you you don't know when you yeah that's yeah. how it always goes yeah. you think it's going to be one way and it's definitely not like yeah, that yeah. and you just got to adjust right yeah, well, yeah. 23 think, as well like the age yeah, <laughs> yeah 23 <laughs> I, i've been talking about the 23 year old life crisis cause that's when i started my business yeah and so many people that i speak to it's like he moved you moved to I when moved you 23 from lebanon, from lebanon. Yeah. it's wow. like yeah. and like all yeah. these people that were hiring he came he came here when he was did you, were you 23 when you came down yeah 23 like yeah. Wow. it seems like a number <laughs> doesn't it yeah like it's number. Every, everyone it's like 23 because i remember feeling because i think 23 is you, you know you so i my when i was younger i was just like partying all the time right yeah. from like 18 to like 21 22 i went to uni for a little bit and then i dropped out and i was just like but then i got to 23 and i was like Okay, but like, what the fuck am I actually doing as well? Yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, that's, a, yeah, yeah. that's a question because I feel like you're past that stage where it's like, well, I don't have just a group of like 20 or 30 friends that I see every week and I just go out with. And I don't want to like, def- for me, I was like, I don't really think my life is defined by that anymore. Yeah. But it's also like, I can't, and I don't want to continue doing that. So like, I got to kind of do something. I've, I felt like 23 was the point of adulting a little bit more. A little yeah. bit. And it gave, made me yeah. really anxious. And that's kind of how I like started the business. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. 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 It makes sense. Agreed, yeah, I can, for sure. Yeah, you can see it. It's just like it, you just hit a certain time where you got to make decisions on what you're going to do. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. like, when did you start to feel like you're actually getting somewhere? Where did you actually start to gain confidence? Because I know from a personal experience, you start a business, so much doubt and like you're not successful yet. You know what I mean? Mm. You need some belief. You need... A little bit of a vision. Have you like thought, fuck, we're going to become the restaurant of the year? <laughs> yeah. you, know, you know, did you have that mentality? We or? always planned on being the best restaurant in Australia. From you the have. Right op- from the word From the go. minute we opened the doors, yeah. we've always said, it's like, we've got it in us to do it. We've just got to do. We've just got to get there. We knew we weren't we weren't there skill wise yet, or knowledge wise, all these things. Respect. That's how we think about it too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We don't know. So <laughs> you've just... got to have that standards for yourself. You have to have those standards for yourself. I, yeah. Shoot when from I, the stars. Yeah, hundred yeah. percent. I do not back down from the fact that we will be the best. Like that's yeah. as simple as you've that. You've got to. I feel like, like you just got to have that attitude. With these kinds of things, you just got to. 
I always say, you just got to keep on living your life as close as you can to the place that you want to go. And then eventually you will become that that thing. You know what I mean? If you keep on telling people I'm going there or selling a product that is close to where you want it to be and telling people that you can do it, eventually you will do it. Yeah. 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 You just have to have the self-belief. It's about going in every day and, and or every week and knowing like pushing yourself as well and getting yourself out of your comfort zone and, and trying to better yourself because you can't you don't want to just become stagnant oh, and that's think hard it's gonna, isn't it gonna come to you yeah. but like we i reckon that for me the personally like that turning point for the restaurant was wasn't so much a turning point but it was the biggest decision we ever made like we were at this I know point where say, we, yeah, yeah we're at this <laughs> point where we were like opening for fucking breakfast and tapas and we were doing anything to get people in the door i was we, sleeping on the couch yeah it was it was literally just, just to make bread it was to stay mayhem alive, yeah. it was like crazy You'd you'd leave service at two in the morning and you'd get back for brekkie service at five. Ah, and it's just I mean like, couches at the restaurant. Like we were just literally just oven rotations wild. of bread going, like I was staying awake on the phone. First two, and three years. Yeah. 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 Two, and then years, and then we yeah. just like we, we had this I remember it so clearly. I remember the night I can probably tell you who was in the dining room. We had the first time that everyone did the tasting menu. Yeah. So it was a Sunday Sunday night, we just had a huge week and we did a full dining room. Everyone opted to do the tasting menu that night. And we coasted through this service like, great. and just had our own pace and you could just feel everything. Like we were all looking at each other like, this is fucking awesome. It felt right. This like is this us. is what it is. Yeah. Literally that night after, I've still got a photo of, of my phone. Yeah. That night after service, we got rid of a la carte. Big and we, had, we had bookings Huge for the next risk. week and we sent out an email it. to everyone just said, oh, listen, there's no more a la carte, just tasting menu, cancelled, everyone fucking cancelled. You just and we were just like, like, we were just like, fuck, we just, yeah, we, just we were just did, like, yeah. fuck. And we, we were had like, to do something because we we're just doing too much work and then I think it and was not getting enough out of it at all. It was just too much. It was yeah. like two or three weeks later, I think we got reviewed yeah. in, the, in the age and we got a hat. Like it was just like that. What and, year and, was that? Uh, it was 24. 16? 215, isn't it? Uh, 216 16, was... Oh, yeah. No, 15, 16, 15, something like yeah. that. Uh, and we didn't even know what the fuck a hat was. Yeah. Okay, we were, so you got a hat from the Good Foods guy yeah, that we didn't, you didn't know what a hat was. Well, we, yeah. The funny story, <laughs> the reviewer was in. The reviewer was in oh, and no. Lane's just going off like, oh, oh. these fucking hat systems, da 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 telling it to this person. She's the head reviewer. And she's and pissing herself laughing. off on her going, Jeez. why was yeah. she saying that nah, she was, does... She's like, oh, what are you... Why are we even talking? No, she was talking to me. She wanted to talk to me and she's like, oh, can you show me around the backyard and stuff because we had all these garden beds out yeah. there it and I t- yeah it was beautiful we had gardens growing and i was just telling her about why i love growing and why i like doing this yeah. sort of stuff and she was you could tell Being she was yourself. really enjoying it and then she's like oh what are your favorite restaurants what do you think about the hats and all that because she knew i didn't know yeah i was just like ah oh, it's crock of shit <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's just like, like right uh, to only <laughs> And I, I didn't know. I was just like, oh, yeah, this place shouldn't... I don't know how this place has got two and then this one has one when this place should have two and this one should not have two. And it wasn't until yeah. like, in the paper like, we the saw fuck? her face and I'm like, oh, fuck. Blaine, that was a, that was a lady. And, and like, how's your opinion changed uh, about it now? Sorry. Uh, oh, no, like... It's, like it's, we didn't know. It wasn't even like an opinion. So it wasn't it's even an all, opinion. We didn't it was, know um, it, was. <laughs> it was actually just something I didn't know enough about and we hadn't even thought about it as being part of what we do yeah and when they asked me about it i was just like oh i don't really understand it like i don't know what it is and it seems like a bit of a crock of shit i don't know yeah um, some restaurants you've just been honest i was <laughs> just literally saying i don't know because yeah. i just don't understand how it all works are we are, we might be too far out of the city for it all these types of things i was like we're i don't think we'll be on anyone's radar we're just a tiny little place in beaconsfield didn't really ever consider that we would even be in the talk of it and then um so yeah. you just kind of blase about it and then what it's done it for us is Melbourne changed Cup our weekend. life, you know? I think she loved it that. It came out problem. on Melbourne yeah. Cup Day. Yeah. We were legit in the paper. Real, yeah. And that's, everyone has the day off. Everyone saw it online and it just fucking exploded. Yeah, and it makes know? it super um, relevant. It makes your place relevant and it has helped us so much. Like, helped us so, so much. It's that one moment. Yeah, that yeah, one moment was yeah. huge. It was a turning curve for us. Like, and, and it could have been Imagine she was like, failure. blacklist them. They fucking hate that. <laughs> but, but also, like, the, way, worry, she, the way she wrote the was, review was great because it, it captured who we are and what the restaurant was and it wasn't trying to make us out to be anything that we're not and it wasn't making us out to be tryhards 
trying to like go into this new game because we'd already been cooking for two years. Yeah, you know, unpretentious. Like it wasn't real, like we'd opened yeah. and then got reviewed. Like these days, it's like four weeks after opening, places are in the paper. Yeah. Correct. We'd worked for two and a bit years. Nearly, so nearly three years. Three years. Like we got we'd already. Out, yeah. yeah. So we were like. And you didn't probably expect the best it, way. did you? Nah. nah. No. We, we always, how do they even know? Like how? Oh, I don't know. I, don't I know think there must have been a, like there must when people might have been watching a little bit, mm. seeing because like the outer suburbs, there weren't many fine dining places, so they probably were looking at more places around the outer suburbs, and we might have popped up as being one of those places. It's kind of a cool story. A few and brothers having a crack. We and, never really did, and still don't really do much advertising. Everything is word of mouth for us. Yeah, that's and a, it's yeah, very like, much like like you like meal. You you probably got. You've probably got like 10 people you know would love it, but you've probably got maybe 10 people you know, oh, that's probably not their cup of tea. You know what I mean? And it's like, yeah. for, 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 for us, that's what it's always been based on. Like, Just depends on like the value that you place on. I think with any kind of fine dining experience, when you're asking people to pay $200 plus for a yeah. tasting menu, a obviously, it's, it's, I believe in it 100% is why I come to go to those restaurants. But I know some people that it's like, I just yeah. wouldn't spend that much money on dinner. Yeah, and totally. that's fine because they don't place the value on that experience Mm-hmm. 100%. That highly, you know what I mean? Yeah. So it's it's its own thing, but I think everyone would love it. Go to their restaurant, guys. That's, so why good. The, that's why the hats is good too, though. That's why the the like the good food guide and all the other places that do awards and stuff and systems for for because there are a lot of people who do love the industry and love dining and fine dining, and the more and more we've gotten involved with it and being aligned with it, the better it's been for us too. Because they show all the all the people who really do care come to you, mm. because that's what the hats is all about. Gives you the exposure. Yeah, it's yeah. fantastic. It's mm. it's been really big for us. Question: Like, so that was let's say twenty sixteen, eight nine years later. Like, boys, you you got hats pretty much every year yeah. since then. Eight nine years later, how does it feel like you know comparing to that one turning moment? Like right now, when you get two hats or best yeah. restaurant in Victoria or top 20 you know what I mean how does it feel right now after all these wins uh, you me oh yeah no, it's feel like it's still always very like nice to have appreciation for what we're doing and the thing is we do put a hell of a lot of work into the customer experience like a hell of a lot of work um, that goes into the ground behind it behind the scenes to make it all really nice for people so it is really nice to get the to get that and also we're running a business so getting these awards is really really good for getting bums on seats and that's what we need that's what restaurants need it keeps you in the forefront of people's mind as well like yeah. it, it, it it reignites oh fuck we've got to go out to my and it still feels great yeah like when you still get a, like in answering question it feels it does feel great and it feels great for everyone it feels great for the network of people that are oh my like oh my mm. restaurant and there's a big network of people yeah but how did the emotion change so like all right your first hat when you was it like because you didn't really know what it was you didn't really Ooh. understand it when you first yeah. got it and now that you're getting but that but was it really like oh my god and then maybe once you understood it the next year was it like oh my god we got it well i think we, we, yeah. we took the step up to two hats because we felt like there was a couple of years there when we had one hat i think there was like one or two years where we were pretty pretty confident we're like well now we're doing fucking two hatted everything right now mm. food service our whole experience is two and we didn't get two and we were kind of like just edging it on that little bit and we're like fuck we can almost get there and then when we got we actually we went it was up in sydney when we got two and blaine and i flew up and our old man called us and said boys it's got this weird feeling i'm I'm coming up we're like what (laughs) he goes yeah i'm coming up i've booked a flight um i'm coming up i just got the weirdest feeling ever queensland so you guys were in queensland we're up in uh in sydney Sydney. 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 so he flew up met us and i'm like dad are you sure he goes it's got this fucking weird feeling Uh, and we got two and it was just like we had some good rhythm though that year yeah yeah that's just massive emotion and like i still remember (laughs) that that night because we just we lost and we had people when we didn't get called out for one hat they would just all come running they just we just people (laughs) from all around the room ran to our table and like boys you got two and we're like the fuck and does that mean? The, that's, <laughs> that was one of the coolest things, though. When you start from a, an, you know, from a group of hospitality, everyone in the same game together, we're all playing, we're doing the same thing, and it's really, really hard. But it's really rewarding. But it's really hard work and everything. When you start getting the respect from all the other people who you already respect and you, you already look up to and stuff in the industry, and they all start running around to you and being like, "Oh fuck, how good is this?" Yeah. Um, yeah. You, you're in a. You're kind of in a world of 
you just you're in a separate world and it's beautiful to be in. Like you feel everyone. special, validated, which yeah. right. we, we all need, you know, yeah. like yeah. you put all this hard work, you you're really that little validation not little, a lot of validation, you know, just yeah. give you another boost and but like also like as a business restaurant owner as well, like owners that's a lot of success, you know, getting those hats and getting that recognition. And like 10, 11 years later, like, you know, financially, there is that much you can make. How could, like, how could you, how do you see this whole thing, like scaling this business? Because it's obviously very, like, personable with you and, mm. you know, the customer service, you know, the farm. How do you think of the whole scalability topic? It's incredibly tight. Like, everything yeah. we do is so tight as a mm. restaurant and it's even though the prices are this it takes it takes nine nine staff members a night to complete it you know and then and there's then, and then there's the books on the outside there's the farm there's all the the things that you don't see um and it's not cheap to run a restaurant at all cost of goods not even, it's even worse now over and the last year a lot of people say to us oh it must be pretty good though because you're growing all your own produce and all that i'm like yeah, yeah but wage costs True. Basically, uh, the, the 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 difference between ordering ordering stuff and getting it delivered, for us, it's like the wage costs are high. Like, so getting people out on the farm, working on the farm, harvesting, processing, that sort of thing. True. That's where that cost goes in. And to some extent, I reckon it's probably maybe a bit more expensive. Yeah. Like, we've got great control over what we're growing and what we're using. We don't waste anything. So that, and we've got good good uh, quality control as well. We're not harvesting shit. We're not putting. It's incredible produce, yeah. We're not putting twenty-five horrible, uh, twenty-five great cauliflowers in a box, and there's five bad ones that you got to throw out. Everything's good. So there's like the there's the pros and cons to it. But do you sell any of the produce? Nah, nah. No, we no, give it away it when we've got us, more. Yeah. Okay. yeah, yeah. We do give away a fair bit to other restaurants and stuff, which has been cool. Yeah. Um, but yeah, in regards to the costs of running a restaurant and everything like that, it is. Very tight. Mm. And the problem with it is it's all just keep... It, it, we're getting squished, essentially. and yeah. yeah, The margin gets smaller. Yeah. Just yeah. everything. We're not, we can't really up our prices because people don't have the money to spend it. And if you go up, up and up and up, you start cancelling out certain people and demographics <laughs> and all these things along the way. So, But the bottom end is going up and it won't stop. So everyone's getting squished like this. And it's, it's actually pretty scary. And we're doing okay because Chase and I, we put a lot of time into doing a lot of work ourselves and like we, we manage all the costs of the business as much as we possibly can and we're, you know, we're, we're surviving and stuff but a lot of restaurants are really, really, really struggling, especially <coughs> larger ones and, and like you look at even just the standard thing like if a Palmer, people won't pay any more than $32 or something for it. It should be like 45 bucks, 50 bucks minimum mm. for that Palmer. So yeah. what are the restaurants there? They used to, we used to have a, um, a percentage, a good percentage of profit on things. That no longer exists. But that's why I asked yeah. the question. It's like, you know, like what's the end goal? Like, you know, uh, obviously the financial wins are very important other than all those recognition. Mm. You know, like could you scale All My to another restaurant or? Um, is, we, is that yeah. we really want to open like, we've had it, we've had, we opened a bar at the last venue out the front and that mm, was great we love that and we love the bar um and we w had a little lounge in the current venue we have now but it was just a bit intrusive on the dining room so we've, we all we're always adjusting that so now we have a private dining room for larger groups instead of having the lounge which is a casual thing but we'd love to we really want to open a bar yeah so we want to open something that you can get an experience like oh my but you can go and just have a glass of wine and a snack. Um, in our area, there's not many places like Circa are awesome with the cocktails. Um, like we even have like a style zone. of food we want to do. We've yeah. talked about it so much that we already have a full. But you can't do it at the current venue. Well, not we, at the current venue. Nah, no, we just need something close that's manageable yeah. where we can still pop our head in and be there because yeah. we don't want to put our name to something that we're not going to be able to be in as well. You know what I mean? Mm. Like, and I think it's probably the strongest our staff's been in. We've got some really good senior staff member members now. And mm. We've got people who can take the reins of things and, and sort of... Thing. But we don't want to open something where I'm never there. We've got wine. a lot of potential ideas and stuff that we probably need to have a, the, a yeah, different place to make those things work. But in regards to the way that 
like we're, what we're doing right now, it's just been really good to have consistent trade. Yeah. yeah. Um, and that's something I'll just never take for granted because, mm. you know, so much interrupted trade over the last six years and now we've had two... Well, we've had one clean year of trade. The last yeah. year, started last year, Horrible. was the worst the industry's ever been. By like How a, come? Oh, just no yeah, one spending money, everyone coming out of whatever happened with COVID still and... If you we talk we, we do talk to all the restaurants and everything like that. The start of last year was the worst it's been for anyone ever in hospitality. There's a lot of dark, like, like a lot of dark news, as well. and a lot of dark news with like fear mongering. Totally, yeah. yeah, and that just made people go, "Fuck, this is we can't afford." Gotta this. save our money. We closed yeah. more services last week due to no bookings or, or mass cancellations than we've ever done. Like last year, last yeah. year. Last year. Yeah. How do you guys deal with this? Like you got to, you just wear it. Unfortunately, you you just, just, there's not much you can really do. You got to like, keep being better. And like we did lots reinventing of reinventing marketing like certain things. Yeah. Like and like that's going back on what we were talking about earlier. The skills we've had to teach each other. Chugger to, now is a weapon on like in regards to he does all the marketing and all the websites and everything at the restaurant. So he does all that. All like Insta. Yeah, I do all that. TikTok? Um, well, no, not TikTok yet. No. <laughs> not yet. I'm trying to get him on TikTok. Yeah. Um, I've but asked like, him a million uh, times. He won't do it. And it's like, for me, like I'm teaching myself how to do that and do newsletters and all this sort of stuff. Keeping people up to date on as many platforms we as I possibly shoots, can. We do shoots, like regularly, yeah, like huge, mon- monthly shoots. Hugh Davidson's absolute weapon what a photographer. King. Yeah, he's the photography yeah. is yeah. brilliant. And he's he's, yeah, been, love it. he's yeah. been amazing. Shout out to Hugh because we love he's him He's so incredible. Much. We love him. Um, and he's like been so great for us because he's sees the things the way we see it. Mm. And he's so great. He's like, boys, we've got three hours. Let's punch out as much shit as we can. Mm. And we'll go in there first thing on a Monday morning, hung over as shit. <laughs> and just trying just really not fine, to look like... <laughs> Hit a boat. No, it's usually hung over. <laughs> nah, it's hung over. A few sherbets at the party. He is very talented. Yeah, he's very he's talented. He's really good. Yeah, His style is guy. unique. And, mm. Yeah, so then trying to teach each other those sort of things and like taking over roles of looking after the books and... And um, now I do all the guest communication and emails and everything like that. Um, so it's like we've had people in those jobs before um, and they've done great jobs, but it's now like if I've, I'm going to, I'm at the restaurant anyway, what well, I'm going to do it. Yeah, so it we, manage, sense. we manage everything. So what we had to do and a lot of other restaurants, so a lot of restaurants closed down, as we know, and a lot of restaurants have had it really hard. We've had the bit like I think I was saying before. We've had the lucky sort of thing where Chase and I were able to take all those roles and and sort of create them for like do them for ourselves. And there were roles we weren't doing or before, but you see the 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 money, the monetary value on all of them. Like you see what's there, and we're able to watch everything closer mm. about where the money's going mm. and energy's going and these types of things. Yeah. So we've just been able to pull ourselves back, but also get better. So learn a lot of ways. Yeah. To manage and deal By with the it sounds all. of things, your guys are you guys are always kind of biting off more and more and doing more and more. What's your work life balance like? You guys both have partners that are in the industry, are they? Uh, mine nah. was. She's just finished up now. Um, doing she does like Pilates and. Well, Lara kind of is. She's, she's florist. Yeah. Florist as yeah, well. Yeah. So, so yeah. Um, now our work life balance is wildly different to what it was a few years ago. Like it was, like for example, Mondays where we don't do anything. We don't really think about work too much um and then blaine pretty much he- heads back in on tuesday and he was actually um doing 11 and everything for the bread yeah, before we came yeah. here and um and then I yeah it like it's it's sort of like we'll find the balance we and we one big thing for us is especially is finishing up early like oh yeah we yeah. we there's places to go in beaconsfield and berwick now to drink later where years ago there was nothing to do after the, you ate dinner. So we'd <laughs> always go, yeah, keep drinking, keep going, da-da-da. And we'd all we'd keep license pouring until our license was whatever, done. Yeah. Yeah. Now it's like, okay, we want to get everyone out at a decent time. Some of it, One of our staff members drives to Cows after work. Like he drives an hour and a half, an hour and 40 minutes. To Phillip Phillip Island. Island. Yeah. On Phillip yeah. Island, yeah. So he drives an hour and 40 minutes. He drives home. three hours a day, yeah. Um, and so yeah. Like for us, it's now like a big thing is trying to, not start wildly early, not finish wildly late, and really just in our working week, make sure that we're while we're at work, we're doing doing that. Um, but but our we, wives both understand as well yeah. the, what we have to do, um, and we have to work. Like, and um, yeah, they have to sacrifice a lot by not seeing us as often and, and, and that. But but they understand that we have to work, and like that's just how it goes. So, but that's the thing, like with. You know, you keep working and you keep doing it for 10, 20, 30 years. 
and in your case, it's like your restaurant is very unique to you. It's yeah. like a personal brand. Yeah, 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 yeah it is. What happened when you don't want to do it? Or like, how do you keep that energy or passion of doing... It's because it's new. Time? It's new every week. Like the menus are new every week. The music's new every week. The wine lists are new every week. Um, everything like we're walking in even the chefs have got different prep lists yeah. each it's, week, all, so. it's also who we are though isn't it yeah. like realistically Chase and I built a different way together like we like to be busy and have something we're working on yeah and we both would feel completely lost if we didn't have this to do mm. like so I day four like, of holidays he's already messaging me going oh, I'm like mate I need, I need to get back, back to work, work. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like dude it. just watch the I test hate holidays. watch some cricket yeah. and fucking relax you did a, some collabs on your holiday yeah. didn't you though yeah, yeah that was yeah, a good yeah, thing yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We, did, we did Bali yeah so Bali was good what uh, was that it's called Luma um, so he's a re, he's a been to the restaurant a couple of times his name's Kieran Morland and he um <laughs> he's originally from our area originally from Keysy Keysborough so he's a, he's a nice guy and he just messaged like a year ago emailed a year ago for, through another guest of ours and said oh I'd love to have you up in Bali and do a collab with us if you ever, ever thought about the idea I was fuck yeah let's do it Crazy. um pay for your flights accommodation and that's and all incredible. that sort of stuff and I was like yeah why not and my wife Lara has been a few times and um oh, I've never been so, and I, I just thought why not did you so, love it? Loved it. Had the best time. Paid for Bali's on holiday. Yeah. yeah. Loved yes. it. So yeah. good. It's so great. good. Loved it. It was the hospitality there. It's so good. And they need us to go there too. Yeah. That's the other thing. Like, yeah. It's it's one of those sort of things that works. Like they, yeah. they need tourists to go there. We have to go there. I feel like in Bali, yeah. everyone's so keen to serve you and like yeah. do anything for you there. It's so great. Beautiful people. And I had, best. The, I had one best of these part. beautiful culture things where I got to work with for, for four days with 20 or so in the kitchen because there was so many, 20 or so Indonesian people who didn't speak a lot of English or whatever. But they were so lovely to me, so helpful. I ate all their staff meals and I, you know, ate all their, like all their traditional meals and everything like that. And it was awesome um, at the best time. So, Fantastic. yeah. Heaps of nasi goreng and... Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you just, like, it was just so not, like, I didn't know what to expect, but they looked after us, made us feel really comfortable, had a great time. Um, and yeah, that that makes all these pop ups and things you do with people all the more worth it. Yeah. And that's why we're sort of saying yes to more of those. And um, you learn stuff at every place you go to. Yeah. Do you boys feel like relaxed now that like do do you feel like you've made it? Do you feel like no. safe? No. In no. terms of like we got the skills, we got the recognition, we got a good history. We could just not kick back, but you know. <laughs> We we kind of yeah, nah. we can chill a little bit like <laughs> no nah, it's probably the opposite actually yeah, we yeah, feel like we've just got to keep on <laughs> yeah keep on fucking going as hard as we can and while we've got the energy and while we've got the drive and and especially where the restaurant's at like I said earlier it feels like we're just scraping the surface of what we can actually do yeah and, uh, as a restaurant as a team and um, it's like little wins like Chugga bought the sorry I call him Chugga by the way that's his. Can we know about Chugga? I, I wanted we, to say this. What's Chugga? <laughs> and I also want to know. Times, I, I want to also know. Oh my, the name as well. Where it came oh, yeah, from. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Chugga's, Chugga's a way better story. Chugga's a way better. Story. <laughs> <laughs> oh my, just lay it on us. Ha- oh my, happened. Just I don't even. Lo- no joke. Our older brother Tyus just goes, "Well, she's called Oh my God," and we all laughed and and because like, we were in the car going to we well, were coming into actually this Christmas. Year. yeah <laughs> when Saint Christmas, Christmas yeah. Over, yeah so we're out here. <laughs> I think it was and St. Christmas. Yeah. These guys are so cute, man. <laughs> <laughs> and we, we we're very <laughs> similar. It's, it's kind we, of scary. Uh, it's so literally, the, the, the Pope was in town. Um, and we, we're not religious so or anything. We're just like, it, we, the Pope was in town. And there was all these people saying, oh my God, oh my, oh my God, all this. And I think Tyson just turned around and goes, oh my. Yeah. yeah, that's interesting. And then we're like, but we can't do oh my. We'll chuck a dot in it so it looks more like, you know, um, a little bit more clean and crisp or whatever. And then... We, we had to do it because we were running out of time for our website and our business cards and <laughs> yeah. all the things you had to get set up before we opened. We, we were struggling to get the other names. Because our registered business name something completely stupid yeah. that doesn't make any sense. <laughs> but like, oh my, we needed a trading name. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we're like, so, oh, yeah, we so good. Wait, what's, what's the business name? Come on, That's so it? good. Yeah. N- <laughs> NFA <laughs> Burt's means no fucking around Burt's. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> so, yeah. No fucking around Burt's challenge. And we always like, I always like, the boys don't fuck around. Yeah, no fucking around. 
Yeah, yeah. Um, so. uh, but yeah, that's it. But Chugger came around because I was oh, when I was little. Good. I just like we used to call him Chugger Lug. Chugger Lug, and Dad called me Chugger. The boys all started calling me Chugger. And now um, it's kind of just we. He was like chugger lug. I don't know. Like chubby, as a kid, he was still chubby, chubby, ch- chubby, chubby cheeks, chugger lug, or whatever when he was a kid. <laughs> and from ever then, we just always called him chugger. And now it's stayed, nice. and yeah. I love it because now guests call me chugger, and I'm really? like people I've never met. And Chugger's like, so good. Hey, yeah, chugger, so good, and yeah. it fits me because I, I love a beer. And he yeah, does he like the chug. <laughs> Billy had a bit of an interesting interpretation of the name. Sugar. <laughs> sugar. It was like, is it yeah, sugar? And I'm like, I'm pretty it? sure it's chaga. <laughs> and he's like, call me anything you want. No, no, no. Sugar. Sugar. I like I that. I actually like sugar. Sweet sugar. Yeah, it's Because he's sweet. sweet. I like that. Yeah, yeah, I like, yeah, yeah, sweet. Yeah. I like sugar. Um, Maybe when I'm like dressed up to go out and I look nice, I'll be sugar. <laughs> yeah. sugar. And then the rest yeah. of the time, I'm chugger. I like that. Though. Sugar in the streets, yeah, chugger in the sheets. Yeah. Or, hey, get off me. Now, nah, speaking uh, of customers, boys, how do you deal with, like, you know, like, mm-hmm. criticism or, you know, like, one Dude, we star love at your one-star reviews on we, Google. We would like to know them. about oh, yeah, one, it's very funny. You know? um, like, great, sometimes yeah. people just, like, sometimes people just shouldn't have left the house, basically. <laughs> That's all it is. It's they like, shouldn't be there. Sure. And, like, sometimes people are just assholes and you can't, it doesn't matter what you do, you, like, you cannot make people happy. Do you know, know the best thing we do, though? We just, we don't give a fuck. Like, we do not care. If you're rude... That's what you got to do. And you don't like... You, you shouldn't be here, then don't come here. And we make sure to tell them as well while they're there. We're like, we don't care. We'll give you money back. You can yeah. piss off. Fuck. Like, and I we've got a waiting list of people. We'll get a waiting... We'll get one of the person off waiting list who wants to be here. Perks of owning a business, Yeah, huh? literally piss Honestly, off. Honestly, yeah. Now, what'd you kick him out So for? this dude, uh, all the chefs had finished up and they, they had left. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So it was just Al and I. And he uh, he'd had a few sherbets, so he was pretty he was pretty up and about. And I was just like, we were we were laughing and carrying on all night, like I like I do. And, but then he's like, oh, I'm a chef, and I was like, oh, cool, yeah, you told me Ooh. that three times. And I was like, fuck, this will be good. And he goes, so I just thought I'd give you a bit of feedback. And I said, honestly, mate, I, I don't good. I don't give a fuck. Don't like, need I'm it, bro. Good. It's all good. And I put Happy on days. my best Robert De Niro from Goodfellas impersonation. <laughs> and in my head, I was like, turn turn to that. You are now Robert De Niro. <laughs> and his friend was just like, oh, I'm so sorry and all that. And I, and I was like, no, you know what? He was a little bit rude. He was yeah. a little bit rude. Okay. He was coming off kind of rude. And he's like, I'm not coming off rude. I'm not coming off rude. And I was like, you're coming off a little rude. You might have, insul- <laughs> you might have insulted us. Like, yeah. it's coming off a he bit rude. He did say he did a lot of other things. But, though, did, he ro- but did he, no, was he roasting the, the He was menu, saying or? something about the food and like, he goes, oh, it's too many vegetables with this, di- with this fish dish. And I said, well, see, that just, I didn't realize I needed understand. to bring a high chair in for you tonight. Like, come on, dude. <laughs> we yeah. do that and one then, a lot, actually. That's our favorite thing. And then he arced up a little there. more. And I said, you know what? Wait, what? You give crayons. No, we just tell him like, oh, if you're not going to behave yourself, mate, we'll give you some crayons and we'll let you sit over there uh, away from the big on. table. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and we say it right in front of everyone. Like, we don't give a fuck. Is it being uh, a wanker? so embarrassed. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's And then they, then they pull their act in. They like, pull their oh, act together. be a fuckhead. But basically, this guy arced up and I just said to him, listen, you can fuck off. You and your mate, fuck off. Get out. Yeah. And they just paid the bill and I was like, yeah, that's fine. And then he was arcing and Alcon walks around the corner and just goes, you heard him. Fuck off. <laughs> and I just opened the door and said, get the fuck out. Which uh, one's Alcon? Is the guy the bull guy? Yeah. Dude. Yeah, and he's a weapon. <laughs> he <laughs> is a weapon. Yeah, he's, like like our, guy. he's like our unofficial so cool. brother. Like, he like transformed the whole thing for me because I had, when I when I came to your restaurant, I was like, oh my, right? It's this whole thing. Yeah. I think I was calling it O, like O-M-Y as yeah. well before. Like <laughs> Anyway. And um, I went there and I was like, it's going to be like two hats, like it's best restaurant thing. in Victoria. I'm like, what the hell? What's his name? Al- Alcon. Alcon comes up and he's like, how are you guys fucking going? Like, <laughs> honestly. And I was like, so, like, I'm good, bro. You? And he's like, yeah, yeah. yeah he's chillin', like, chillin'. That's what, he what do you guys feel like? Blah, blah, blah. And he's just like, so like casual. And I, I didn't oh, yeah. shout out that Alcon. It's so funny. Well, and he's yeah. so nice. Yeah. Yeah. He's, and it's uh, detailed too though. So everyone's really fun and like, like that, but detail driven. So it's the little things he won't miss, like you know, a napkin on your table or this or that. So they, they don't miss anything either. So yeah. it's fun. Super precise But it's service, detailed. But it's not, services. Like, it's yeah. not taking the piss. Like, yeah. Yeah, yeah. We can take the piss, but you don't want to like, you, you can't let it slip in the, in the room. You've you know? got to have fun with everything. I think that's yeah. what we have a good balance with at the agency. Yeah. The product that we produce, that we put up, 
we like to think is exceptional. We, we, try, we try to put it at the highest end that we can. But while we're doing it, we're having a great time. Yeah. We're Got having it. a laugh. And but we're also, it, like, honestly, informal. you get these people that... <laughs> I'm just going to yeah. say, you know, like, it's impossible to please, please everyone, you like know, it. and I don't know, you start to feel, fuck, is my work not good, but everyone else is telling you, fuck, this looks good, you yeah, know, yeah, totally. and then, like, I don't know, it's a bit hard to deal with them, I, th- I mean, telling them to fuck off is an option, yeah, you try to avoid it as much as you can, you know, you know, you know, we have done, though, and like, I've done this for me, for my own sanity, I don't look at reviews and I haven't looked at yeah. reviews for like probably four or five years. Um, Good online. call, man. Honestly. I, just ha- I honestly yeah. swear to you, I haven't looked at them. Love so that. if I ever catch, because well, I, on my Google thing on my phone, they Pops come up, up sometimes like with five star or three or whatever, four, if ever, whatever. And even then I don't even bother. I just let it play, whatever it is. But the biggest one is, and this, it, it comes across as being arrogant or whatever, but it's not. I don't actually want to know what people's opinion or feedback of certain dishes are. I don't want to Why know. Why is that? Because it doesn't give me any... If I listen to everyone, what the fuck would of I course. do? I love that. Like, I'd have I a bastardized version of what I... I'd, if I listened to everyone and put it all into play, I would no longer... I'd just have blank plates. You'd probably be like have, everyone else. He only has to listen to me. I don't, yeah, <laughs> I, and that's what we do, actually. That is strictly the rule. So, I, when I... Every week we do new dishes, like... This week, we've got a lot of new dishes on. Every week, you change the menu. Every week, yeah. So, last week, we had a fully new menu. Like, what we only fuck, changed guys? one course. And this week, we've ch- I've changed every single one again. Dude, like, yeah. how do you find the time? Like, from oh, just, yeah. like farming After the to planning yeah. the menu, <laughs> like, to testing. It's actually a no, lot there's of... no testing. Well, that's the thing. So, we do, we do progressive courses that, like, we... We'll trial something, and we only have small windows, so that's the thing with our, with our growing. So it's all about yield for starters, and the, maybe what the product will look like. So we actually have to change every week, adapting to that. So, for instance, a turnip will be that big on week one, but week three, the turnip will be that big. And then you have to treat that turnip differently. So if you're like cutting it into small circles, and it has to look really neat on this dish, it might look good for that week, but then you're going to have the big ones in three weeks' mm. time. So you've got to change that dish or or you're going to have an off cut because you're trying to keep it the same or it it loses its relevance to the to everything the the leaves are different (coughs) everything's different about that product so we're we're actually moving deliberately with the seasons which is making us really fluent and at, at actually doing that and then we you know because of that we actually have uh a constant testing always happening but with some uh, so many years behind us. Is there a season that is better than other seasons, or as is it all? It's uh, got, my it's personal favorite is the my personal favorite. the crossover of winter and spring. Yeah, it's that's beautiful. my favorite. Well, the so one now, we're currently well, we're current, we're in at, yeah. and kind of just about to get into when you've got winter early produce, spring too. Yes, yeah, so and happening, you get yeah, like yeah. that early spring. You get flowers. You so get September all these. is the best. I month. would say my favorite. I yeah, I would I'd almost be the. You're the opposite. I'll be at the <laughs> end of summer, moving into autumn. Okay. Yeah, but sort of late, late summer produce. I reckon that's mm. that's pretty cool too. It's You get a real blend. So you get your late season tomatoes, your end of year zucchinis, cucumbers. you still got them around. Where do you guys yeah. grow? Like, give us a little bit of... What do we grow? Yeah, like a list. Oh, I, I did, well, I basically, I give you... There's On the property alone, there's 400 to 500 different varieties already going wow. of perennials. So things that, like thyme varieties, we've got 14 different thyme varieties, rosemary the same, mint, sage, on and on and on Whoa. for perennial things. And then there's a heap of trial plants, like heaps of different, like tree marigolds of every, ting- every single time, verbena of all different flavours, myrtles, all of them. We've got uh, probably about 70 fruit trees in total. What all different fruits? varieties. Yeah, like all the different lemon varieties, all the different beehives. Um, I mean, I could go on. So, but then you've so got crazy. your then you've got your your tomatoes, your zucchinis, your cucumbers. Those things you do in that short season. Like we try and grow as much as we can to preserve as much as we can, and then you roll into where you are now, which is like your root vegetables, your turnips, mm. and and you have all those know. different varietals. So you got I, I can't remember how many different types of lemon you said there. Whatever yeah, all the different types of lemons. Heaps, heaps, heaps. and. So you're on the fly, 
yep. as a chef. First off, I just want to say like, it sounds like the amount of knowledge that you would have attained from doing this yeah, and like turning the farm into a dish in such a short period of time and your knowledge of ingredients must be like crazy. But then also like, how do you go through that? So you've got all those different types of lemons. What are you doing? Are you just trying to focus on one lemon at a time or like you ch- like take one from each different tree and <laughs> yeah, then you so try it? Like how does that work? All has to be thought about really. So first you have to be really present and there all the time. That's the key to it, I reckon. And we, because of the thousands and thousands and thousands of dishes we've done, uh, we were talking about it the other day, We've literally done thousands of, you know, some, some restaurants might only go to 10 years and have done maybe 200 because they've stuck on those ones. And that's great. That's fine. Yeah. That works for them. I'm not Absolutely. saying that's a bad thing. But what we've done is just so many thousands of dishes. So you start to really work out how things work mm. at a different level. And then because we've done the seasons over and over, we work out how much we need yield-wise to actually make this a reality, this course, and and so on and so forth. It is literally a, a head fuck every week. Mm. That is the best way to explain it. I, yeah, I, I put it down on a sheet of paper, on an A3 piece of paper every week, every single week as I'm going through the week. So but basically the menus will be finished on Tuesday night. I'll do all the lists and everything and we'll do a briefing on Wednesday and a farm harvest. And then Thursday we put the menu together and cook it. And as by Saturday, I reckon, I start preparing the next, next A3 menu. piece of paper. And he breaks it down into basically like Fruits, vegetables, herbs, that kind of thing, yep. roughly. And then it's dairy, seafood, meat, pantry. And then it's looking about, okay, this is what we have. This is what we're going to work with. Yep. And we go, okay, we know we're going to have enough to do this dish. And then we'll know we've got that. And we can do this. Mm. Um, and do you and go back to dishes sometimes yep. that you did like? We do. We, we don't. Yeah. Different ways, though. Yeah. We, we don't like way, repeating yeah. things. There's one dish which has been on for 11 years and it only lasts for four more months. Which was yep. like? Three or four months. The Jerusalem artichoke dish, which is. With the egg. Yeah. Yep. yeah which Bro, is. Um, that is. There's no like reason to change so it. So good. It's my favorite, my favorite thing in the world. Yeah. It's so yum. It's one of the best things I've ever come up with an idea this week, which is awesome. We're still going to do that dish, but to make it last a little bit longer, we're just going to do it in a snack form, so one mouthful. And also, it opens up menu a little yeah, bit. Yeah, it gives us a spot on the menu for a, a different thing. So, or, synergy dishes are really dangerous, I reckon, in our, in, in our style, because be. they actually hold your menu back. So, everything needs to be ever-changing through the menu to actually work directly with all of the produce we're growing. So, <laughs> when, we, when we actually have one dish sitting right there not moving, it actually slows the whole menu progression down. Yeah. And that's a so, big yeah. thing we go into a lot together, which is the progression of, of when you walk in the door to when you leave and everything that happens in between. Mm. That's why a lot of the, like we talk about wine pairings, we talk about music pace, we talk about how we want the food to be paced and like we want that in cutlery. Client, cutlery wow. and, like you don't want to... Everything. You don't, like, every, every single, single little thing. About. It's like, oh, okay, well, we don't want to do that dish here because it's going to do this and mm. I don't want to do that dish because it's going to be better with this wine. So we have to sort of make it so it's a, a flow. And, and that's one is, thing people comment on. They just go, this, that just all flowed. Like we walked mm. in three and hours not, ago. It's not mm. something you can you teach feel or it. learn. Yeah. No, it's, it's just, just like I think intuition it's just, and... And also like being fucking so similar. Yeah. Like, yeah. But our focuses are on different things. Mine's on front, his on kitchen, yeah. but everything else about what we do is so similar. Why do you speak to us on that? You've mentioned the music a couple of times. What are you... Sorry, Bird. Yeah. But what's the... You're creating the music, what are you, what are you um, actually looking uh, music, at? I don't, yeah, yeah. We, don't ch- we don't make it so it's like timed with what you're doing because I'm like, I don't have fucking time for that. <laughs> right. There is a restaurant. It's, it's in- also too, I think it's too hard for us to do that because yeah. there are ever-changing menus yeah. for that idea. But I think, I think personally music's Huge. Like a massive, almost 10, 10% of a dining experience. Agree. Especially in our place because it's small, relatively quiet. It can get a bit loud if you want it to, but you want to sit there and you want to hear the music because it's fucking awesome. You've got to like, appease to all the demographics of people as well. Yeah. You, you've got to find a way to make that work. Because you can piss people off yeah, with yeah. You know, music they might not like. As or much as I want to play Nas all night, I'm like, <laughs> uh, I'm like I don't know if I can do that. So it's always nice to put in some Neil Young. But do you get <laughs> yeah. sometimes, because like it's yours, do you get to actually play what you yeah. really well, want? Well, yeah, half all the, of our... It's a 50-50 split on the it's playlist of what music. we love. Like, it goes, no joke, it goes from Wu-Tang 
to uh, what's that? Robert Under, Sandberg. Yeah, Robert Robert Sandberg. I love I classical love that, music. Man. Yeah. yeah, so I'm big on that. And and I love Led, loves Led Zeppelin yeah. and Pink Floyd, and and I love rap and all that. Mm, so yeah. it's like it's I'll, such a blend, and like you'll get this classical song, and it will go into like Electric Relaxation by Tribe Called <laughs> Quest, sick. and then it will go into Breathe by Pink Floyd, then into Steely Dan. You're just like. The fuck did we just listen to? It's yeah. like a breakup mix. No, I do remember the music being good when I was there. Yeah, yeah, definitely pays off. Yeah, I love that because honestly, like even at Heart Media, some a lot of the time we like. Obviously, music is a big part of editing, video editing, yeah. and I worked for other people a lot of the time, and you know, you're just like locked by what they want, their brief. But right now, it's like if I'm editing something, I have full control. I put stuff that I listen to that I like and yeah. it makes it so man, much like, better. Just yeah. like, it know, makes it so much better. Get, I can feel it when it's his music. You know, yeah. you get a lot more involved in it. Like mm. you enjoy it. I, I just it's love a, it. It's well, such even a big part we of put life. music on every every Instagram post we do. Yeah. We add music. And you can tell who posted it based on the music. <laughs> Mine's the like music. jungle and all that sort of stuff and Blaine's got like classical <laughs> and it's like, but it suits us. It kind of, yeah. it like, you know, you're it's walking It's the duality down. of the restaurant too, right? Yeah. Because yeah. you guys are, it's a refined experience, but you're also kind of like a bit more, I'm not, not rough around the edges, but it's not, a, a, well, we're not it's stiff. not full on. Yeah, you're not stiff. It's just not as yeah. pretentious. Yeah. yeah, it's not yeah. pretentious. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And like we talk it. about it a lot, but it's not actually, it's just a natural progression of mm. our staff and who yeah. we are is, who what's attracted to come and work with us and be around us is, we're not, no one's there and stiff and yes, sir, and no, sir. And it's very much walking the door and you're immediately greeted with another human They're being. They're genuinely having that's fun, all it is. actually. Everyone's, some of this we're all humans. We all shit the same. So yeah, I think like, that's the beauty of you guys doing it completely from your own, on your own from scratch, right? Because if you were trained in, I don't know, a lot of the guests that we've had on have been trained in traditionally French kitchens. Mm. And they obviously, there's that French style of yes, how, to run, how, to run, yeah. how to run the kitchen and everything. And they all talk about it being, you know, oh, like it was good, but it was like really fucked and really hard. And you know what yeah, I mean? They would have yeah. done that. But because you guys got to just run it the way that you wanted to, you kind of are looking at it from more of the way that you want a kitchen to run or the floor to run opposed to how it already is run. Yeah, Do you know what necessary? I mean? What's necessary? Like what's yeah. completely necessary to get a really good job done mm. rather than doing like, respect. yeah. There's got to be respect and hierarchy. Yep. That's still got to exist. Obviously. But it doesn't need to be done... You don't need to be a cunt about it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Don't take yourself too yeah. serious. Yeah. Yeah. There's a way to do it where do no you, one gets upset and pissed off. Yeah. There's literally boys, a way to do it. Yeah. It's just all about respect, honestly. Yeah. 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 Totally. Do you boys think that um, your experience would work with like a hundred seater restaurant? Um, yeah, I will. Good. Yeah, we, yeah. I mean, we've done it before. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we have. did. Well, my first, I was head chef at a joint for a couple of years there, right next door to the one we are now. I was a lot younger, obviously, but it did work. Like, uh, we didn't do the, our style. We did more bistro style, but it was still similar cooking in a way. Um, yeah, we were but busy as fuck. As Omai is, like, what makes it so special is how small and intimate it is. Oh, yeah. and, and that we can stand at the table and chat to you and not have to be looking around at the other 400 people to look after mm -hmm. and um, chaos of smashing plates and glasses. It's Everything's so controlled and everyone always comments. It's like... You guys are all pretty, pretty chilled. It's like, well, yeah, we're ducks, ducks yeah, sitting on you water. Seem like you're, you're right. The, the yeah. style wouldn't like what we do now wouldn't work for 100 seats. No way. Like, and we'd need a farm. We need a lot more staff, and we need a farm about ten times the size. Ten times the size. Is that on the horizon for you guys? What's the end goal? Do you guys think about an end goal? You take each day, day by day. What's the? No, nah, we've got plenty of yeah, plenty of yeah. We chat about it, but we also. Are just very much living in the now and doing what we're doing. If anything, we'd rather we'd like to get less seats in and mm. make it a more premium experience Intense where experience. it's so in like focused in on the guests. Like we don't expect do. that at all. Venue but would be important too, though. Yeah. We're we're always looking for the next like what our what our venue would be. Still Beaconsfield. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. But Area, we yeah. we always wanted to have. So when we before we lost the last place, that was where we were going to sit on that for a long time, or not a long time. You know. It was a historic building, yeah? The place yeah, like historic yeah, building. Yeah. And sit there for a while and, and do what we needed to do to save up enough money and things to get a property and put a and put our restaurant on it so we can have the farm around it. That's the That's, the, that's, a, that's, that's, the dream. that's always it's been the, the end goal. It's always been the dream. Um, so, yeah, it's definitely... Are you guys in that process right now? We're, we're always in that process of trying yes to get no. there. Yes and no. Like, we are, but we're still just still climbing out of... 
climbing out of yeah, COVID. That's cheaters. the hardest part. Yeah. Yeah. Speaking of dreams, boys, we got this fantasy question we like yeah. to ask guests. <laughs> if time and place didn't exist, who would you choose to do a collab with? Any person, celebrity, chef. What would your collab look like? Oh, I reckon uh, I've got this weird one where I'd love to have like a dinner party with the Rat Pack, like with Sinatra and those guys, because <laughs> they would have fucking. Parted. You guys would get along. Yeah, so well I just too. reckon it would have just been that. Like, I don't know what it is, but I think that's. I'd go there. Do a collab. All right. Yeah. I reckon. Um, <laughs> I don't know. Probably. Oh, like my favorite chef. I guess could be any could be anyone could be, be a chef a could, someone's someone's uh, we had Kanye West was ah. one of them yeah yes, <laughs> oh fuck I can't think of anything um, follow your heart I usually answer these things yeah you do you know, <laughs> I'm he's got at, it <laughs> I'm, I'm looking at him because he's usually got it all there uh, uh, I don't know I got one for you yeah what? I reckon it would be um, Farron Adria yeah in probably prime, Farron Adria yeah in like prime. Farron Adria the original El Bulli chef big fan Beautiful. Yeah, loved, loved everything. Nice. He's read loved that the... book so much that it's fucking... Yeah. It's and we don't do that style at all. The weirdest thing is I don't do his style of cooking at all, not even yeah. a little bit. Like Maybe respect doing... him more as a chef, yeah, as a person. Just what he did, what he, what he was able to do by changing... And even the Rocker Brothers. The Rocker Brothers, Rocker yeah. Brothers, another one. Changing the game. And then Rene Renzeppi as well, like those two, that, probably those two people. Because they really took like the cuisine and moved it and changed it. Um, and that's what you aspire to be too, right? That's yeah, what I think doing. what we're trying to... Well, we are like on that end of the a trend of place. A lot of restaurants are now doing are growing uh, as well. Or like, at least got, thinking about seasonality and providence yeah, of food. And like, where they get things from, talking more about locally sourced stuff. And not that saying that just because we do it, everyone does it. But we are setting a good example for that. I think and it's definitely a trend even that we're noticing with our clients and restaurants that are approaching us, even ones that are opening that are new. They're all talking about seasonal menu, mm. yeah. doing things. That's how, when you get the best produce, yeah. higher quality sourcing. And I think that there's an overall trend, I would say, in Melbourne hospitality at least, where they're kind of talking more about use it, doing less but having better ingredients yeah. Yeah. as a focus, which I think is always the best way <laughs> forward. I think it's good. Like I think it's all good as well, as long as they're doing it with the right intentions and not just to sort of like so say doing we're it. doing a seasonal thing or we've got... Um, locally sourced this I might be you're like you're in the middle of the CBD like you're not locally sourcing like you can but it's like you know it's hard because it's it's hard because we do it we live and breathe it every day and you guys are like the pinnacle of that right because you're we, doing it we so give it a fair directly yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. yeah we give it a fair nudge but yeah which is cool and I mean and that's what we're and that is what we're currently doing we're in the process of being that sort of you know, on that shift of mentality about how we should source things and sustainability and all these things mm. that should be attached to restaurants and we're trying to do that. So Beautiful. So you guys said you got, you guys are obviously doing more and more collabs. You said you're open to that. You talked to us briefly about one that you're doing now. Yeah. Yeah, we just I'm came back from Brisbane. I'm not 100% sure when this is going to air, but yeah, yeah, yeah. you can we speak about that. We just came back from Brisbane. Yeah. We did one with um, exhibition. exhibition up there. Is that one, a restaurant? Yeah. yeah. One crazy little, like amazing little 24 seat yeah, omakase yeah. style. But um, nice. yeah, just, it was, it was so much fun. Such a, like an eye opening experience for us. Cause it was such a different experience. <coughs> yeah. Um, and so we went up there, we took Carl, one of the chefs and um, yeah, did one night, great. one night only. And I got to walk around the dining room and swear at people. And um, it was good fun. It was like, swear you look, well, swear at them in a nice way. Like, in a nice way <laughs> with them, them. Like I do. Yeah. With swear them. with them. Yeah. 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 Um, <laughs> and then, yeah, we've done, we're doing one with Gerald's Bar as well uh, yeah. in, in, in Carlton. So um, we're going to go see them. Like they're idols of, idols of ours, like in particular of me because it's a front of house focused venue. Um, Chuck's been talking about Gerald's Bar forever. I know, right. every, and so I cool. first yeah. time I, I met them, moments. I was like yeah. so nervous. I was like, they asked him, they just yes, they called s- me. Hey, do you want to do a pop up? I'm like, are you serious? <laughs> <laughs> it's like, yes. Are you yeah. sure? <laughs> are you sure? So it's like, are you fucking sure? The right number. Mm. Um, but yeah, it's just like those kind of things are so cool because it's it's when you get to work with people you like fully idolize and. Um, I think I told him the other night. I was like, I wear a, I wear a, my shoulder cloth on my shoulder because of you, and he goes. You tell me that every time you see me, I'm like, fuck, I'm so embarrassed. <laughs> <laughs> and oh, I was like, I'm going to blame, we're going to go. But they're great. They're, that's the thing. They're great people. And they they, they are like icons in Melbourne for yeah. hospitality, like what they do. 
And uh, yeah, we get to learn more, get to see more. Even just being aligned with them is so yeah. cool, yeah. I think that's the best thing about having a business just overall, just getting to a point where you can start working with the people that you actually really want to start yeah. working with, Yeah. right? Like even getting you guys on yeah. the podcast for us is a bit of like a reverse moment of that, right? <laughs> for what you're talking about. Um, yeah, we always wanted to work with you in some way, do something like that. So that's really cool. Um, yeah, we spoke a lot about the restaurant side of things. How do you go with the wine? How do you, what's your process there? Um, it's such a pretentious subject, unfortunately. And it's such a... <laughs> You're in a safe um, space. Oh, yeah. No, <laughs> yeah. Just letting you know. It's such a, like, uh. more often than not, you get made to feel... It's, it's shifting a fair bit, but you do get made to feel like an idiot in the wine industry when you're a guest um, because you don't know everything about wine and all that. And for me, it's wine's fun. Wine gets you drunk. Wine's made by great people. It's always grown in beautiful places. It's got a story. Um, it's Yeah, there's it's history. The there's yes. so much behind wine that is more than what's that 120, 150 mil in your cup. Um, and for me, it's about just yeah getting to know these people personally, telling their story. I don't get to make the wine. like I can pour it and everything has to make sense on that side. Similar to what's happening with our food, which everything makes sense. Everything on the plate makes sense. I don't want to just be pouring random wine. So we, we put a lot of emphasis in, on, on predominantly Victorian uh, producers. Um, uh, most like 90% of the wine list is, is, is Victorian, um, which is amazing because we're so lucky to be in this state with some of the best wine Unbelievable. in the world. Yeah, yeah. it's so good. Uh, and very underappreciated. Like there's parts of Victoria that people just don't give a shit about when it comes to winemaking. The Masson Ranges for me is one of those places where I feel like more people need to appreciate it for how phenomenal that it is and the people in those places we've met so many of them and become friends with them and it's like idol moments like meeting michael dylan yeah. from bindi and now him being friends with us it's like oh my god this guy fucking he likes us it's like so cool. they, so you cool. know so yeah. um yeah and it's just about making sure you're breaking down those those barriers of of the pretentiousness and the snobbiness of what wine is and um, again, I don't try hard to do that. It just naturally kind of happens because I'm excited about it. I get really pumped up about talking about wine to people and, and making sure it's yummy first and then it's got a great story and it doesn't fuck with his food too much. That's like literally the three points that I always go with. Like, mm. I, I don't want it. So yeah. good because I think also like the same, it's the same thing with the, with the whole thing of you becoming a chef and doing this whole thing because you kind of just thought it to yourself. Mm. It's just a reflection of you. Yeah. Do you well, know what yeah, I mean? it's and it's like a pretty raw expression of what wine service is because for me it's very much like fun and enjoyable and if you can teach someone something that's great. Um, but it's not a fucking lecture. Like it's, you're not sitting there getting told what hand they picked it with on what side of the hill. It's like it's about the people who make it. Um, and I think when you came in, you had one of the yummiest wines you said, and it was, I remember it was the Anderson Marsh Albarino. Um, Crazy from, you remember from up in, uh, up in, memory. Up Man, in the so high country. Good. And I remember you drank it and you're like, it's the best thing I've ever drank. And I'm like, <laughs> so it's a sick good. wine. So, yeah. Which um, one was that? Was that the one, was that the one with the deers? No, that was the Samba side. That, that was the, the uh, that yeah, was the yeah. Mandara Samba yeah. side Pinot, but, um, yeah, it's we'll chat later. Make sure you drop me the name. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I forgot what it was called. Yeah. <laughs> but um, but no, it's wine's fun, drinks are fun. Like, do you um, do cocktails as well? Yeah, yeah we do. And, and is and that inspired by the seasonal? Produce yeah, always, always. We've got one on now called Killer Bees, um, Wu Tang Forever, um, and the Killer Bees is farm honey, farm citrus, and then gin infused with farm botanicals. Yum. And it's like simple, clean. It's got honey, fresh honeycomb on top. It's wicked. Fresh got, honeycomb yeah, on got top. Like, Come um, on, Yeah, we, we actually, it was actually on the menu when we were there. It's yeah. really, really That's cool. got so like good. a strawberry gum fizz on at the moment. Um, yep. And the strawberry gum's just bursting. So good. Um, and then all the non-alcoholic. And then all the non-alcoholic drinks, yeah, all made in-house by us. So What's strawberry gum? It's, oh, um, like it's a, a eucalypt, part of the eucalypt family. Uh, it's used to be called oh, strawberry gum, right? Yeah, yeah. Sense, makes sense. It used to be called forest berry because it smells like strawberries when you when yeah. you um, when That's it rains so cool. and stuff. Yeah. Naturally, I think you guys' next sidestep is where's the own my vineyard. Yeah, <laughs> well, <I'm laughs> slash like, distillery. He's, he's made a couple of wines. Well, I live on a vineyard already, and I've made two wines under my my wife and I made two wines. So cool under our own label. Um, she currently works on on that property as well. But yeah, like. A vineyard, you can't, you don't go into it. So joke. Thinking, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. man, it's so. like you either got to go into it with a lot of money or a lot of time, but both is uh, is is, is, is yeah. Yeah. And it's kind of like 
it's something we make beer and things like that. We do collaborations with breweries because yep. we grow heaps of hops. We've made one with uh, Sailor's Grave. We're going to hopefully do another cool. one when their new place opens up. And um, we've made gin in the past. Well, yeah, the 3806 yeah. boys around the corner in Berwick. They, um, we made a beer with them with all our own hops. And so, like, for us, it's like, yeah, we, we make um, all our non-alcos. Everything's all made in-house. They change each week. Shrubs, kombuchas. Like M's dominating on the on the kombucha yeah, game at the yeah. moment and kvass and, and like juices. So like we all of our growing apples, we make all our own apple juice and things like that. We make all our preserved cucumber juice and yeah. everything like that. So we use flow that all through our non-alcoholics as well. Yeah, yeah. Unbelievable. Look, guys, <laughs> we could we could talk we to you forever. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> you guys really did it. Uh, exceeded our expectations it's been so fun getting to chat with you well, I think we have to wrap it up though we do yeah, yeah we, we, we it's sad it's a sad it's yeah. sad, to, it's sad <laughs> to end it it's sad, uh, yeah. but yeah thank you so much for coming on this has thank been you. such Thanks a great chat we did so much forward planning for this and had all these different questions and things that we thought we were going to ask you <laughs> and we have not even looked at we had on our phone I got my phone here rabbit hole <laughs> and we just like we've just gone for it we haven't even looked at it it's been such a good such a fun conversation yeah. so thank you so much for coming uh, thanks awesome. for coming boys. anytime Appreciate we'd love it. to do it again yeah. thank you we'll Beautiful. definitely come and do a, an on my you gotta take me there man. yeah and actually <laughs> next time me. you do just come maybe if it's a lunchtime whatever as well come to the farm as well sure. yeah. farm do, farm. You, do you open for lunch as well yeah 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 okay. on Saturdays and Sundays Saturday oh that'll be nice man Sunday yeah. lunch that's the day that's yeah. Sunday yeah. lunch yeah. and I can take you down to the farm afterwards so yeah. something like nice. that yeah. Yeah. alright cool beautiful that's Sweet. amazing guys thank you beautiful. thank you appreciate it <laughs> went down a rabbit hole didn't we nice. <laughs> so soon yeah, we can take yeah. <laughs> thanks, thanks mate